All right, everything else operational within? Okay, thank you all. All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the regularly scheduled Tabertown Council meeting for August 19th, 2024. I call the meeting to order and ask for the adoption of the agenda as presented, please. Councillor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we adopt the agenda as presented. Motion on the table. All in favor? Carried okay. unanimously. Thank you. All right, moving on to uh, item three, public hearings. Item 3.1, public hearing for direct control development application 24141. Just remind that the members of the public in attendance who wish to speak against or for the direct control development application 24141 will have a five minute limit for speaking and must state their full name for the record. Also must state if they're speaking for themselves or behalf of any organization. Related to application 24141, Mr. Thiebaud. I'll get uh, Ms. Selena Newberry to come forward and, and Chris Egan to speak to that. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Good afternoon. So we have a public hearing um, in relation to our development application that we're going to see, I believe, next after in the action items. Um, because this is a direct control district and this is a discretionary use in the district, um, when council makes the decision on a discretionary use permit, there's no appeal period attached to that. So we hold the public hearing before so that any members of the public um, can come out and speak for or against and have their concerns and comments considered when you make the decision. We did also send this um, out to everybody within 100 meters. We sent them a letter. Um, I ha haven't received anything in writing. I did receive one phone call with regards to the ad specifically, but not actually the development. All right, thank you. So just to confirm, there's been nothing in writing for or against the direct control application. Correct. All right, thank you. All right, <clears throat> is anyone present uh, who wishes to speak against direct control application 24141? Anyone wishes to speak against application 24141 for a second time? Anyone wish to speak against direct control development application 24141 for a third and final time? Seeing none, all right. I'll also ask, is there anyone here wish to speak for direct control development application 24141? Anyone wish to speak for direct control application 24141 a second time? And is there anyone present that wish to speak for direct control application 24141 a third and final time? All right, seeing none, no motion required. Moving on to the next item, item four, item 4.1, uh, minutes of regular meeting of the council, July 15th, 2024, Mr. Thiebaud. Um, administration notes nothing. There's no, me. there isn't a motion required. No motion required, no, correct. It does, it does mention one on the minutes, Councilor McLean, but there isn't a motion required, sorry. Um, there's nothing, adjust, no adjustments in the minutes from administration, so over to council. All right, any questions arising? I'm prepared to make that required motion. Councilor Ruffert. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion that council adopts the minutes of the regular meeting of council held on July 15, 2024, as presented. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carry it now, Thank you. On to item five, business rising, there are none. Item six, bylaws, there are none. Item seven, action items, item 7.1, uh, DP 24-141, 4818 72nd Avenue, semi-detached. Mr. Thiebaud. So this is the public hearing we just had, and I'll ask uh, Selena Newberry and Chris Egan to come back up and field any questions council might have. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council again. Um, so the, before you, you have the application. Um, in this particular application, we are um, calling this similar to a semi-detached dwelling. It doesn't really meet any of our specific definitions in the bylaw. Um, it is very close to a semi-detached, so that's the route we've chose to go with this. Um, this particular application does require a couple of variances. The first one would be for um, the setback at the front of the property. So um, the deck is not 
normally allowed to be closer to the front of the property than the front of the home. But in this case, because it's on the front of the home, it is. It's not an unreasonable request, in our opinion. Um, so we've recommended it to you. And then um, we also have a maximum height variance. It's 10 centimeters, point 10 meters, or 0 0.10 meters, so 10 centimeters, just for the ultimate height of the building. Um, again, not unreasonable. And then the last variance is um, for the number of stalls for parking. So it does say in the direct control district that you have to provide a minimum of two stalls. And these particular parking spots are already set up from the initial development for two parking spots. So um, technically, because they have the second unit, they would need four. So we've just asked for a reduction of the four stalls back to the two. Um, as these are small units, we don't foresee it necessarily being people with a pile of cars living in these. The one bedroom is probably going to be a one person. The two bedroom could be more than one person, but we do feel the re reduction in parking is reasonable. All right, thank you. Any questions arising? Councillor Beckering. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Cecile, you're, you're, uh, <coughs> you're telling us this is a semi-detached dwelling, but similar to, what is the difference, please, if there's a difference, because there must be a difference. <laughs> yes, I'll look, Mr. Mayor, through to Mr. Beckering. Um, so a semi-detached, the definition says that it's like side by side. Yeah. So this isn't exactly side by side. It's kind of, they share a wall, like a semi-detached wood. It's not one above, below and above, like a duplex. It's a shared wall, and they're each on the main floor. So because they're not directly side by side, they don't directly meet that definition, but they do share a wall, so it's quite similar. All right, thank you, Councillor Schwarzen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Selena. Um, this is a new, the newer part of the development, and I hate to set a precedent for parking when parking is like the number one concern. Um, is there any access to street parking uh, for this property? Mr. Mayor, through to Councillor Sorensen. Um, yes, this is a little bit of a wider area out there. There would be the ability to park on the side. It is a private road. It's not a public street, so it would be like the same as someone's driveway. Um, because this is a condo plan, all that infrastructure within the condo plan belongs to the condo and not directly to the town. So uh, while they're not necessarily designed to the town's street standards, I did take a drive out there and they are fairly wide. So if there were a car parked on the side in the odd spot, you should still be able to get around. Just at least one more vehicle. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councillor Becker. Thank you, sir. All right. Councillor Brune. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm prepared to make a motion that Council approves development permit DP24-141 for a similar to semi-detached dwelling at 4818 72nd Avenue, Unit 72, Condo Plan 2210424, -2 with the following 13 conditions. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Chair unanimous. Thank you. On to item 7.2, nepotism policy, CSHR 13. Mr. Thibault. I see Ms. Grace Noble is here, so she'll come forward and uh, explain and field any questions. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Good afternoon. We are bringing <coughs> forward our nepotism policy for renewal. Um, you'll see highlighted, there's a couple um, articles where we've added some inclusive language. And then we also had um, some legal advice um, that brought forward um, the combining of two articles into the new 2.3.2. So any questions? All right, thank you. Any questions arising? Fairly straightforward, I believe. Councillor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No questions, but I'm prepared to make a motion. All right. I move the council approves the nepotism policy CS-HR-13 as presented. Thank you, motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carry on, thank you, Grace. <coughs> on to item 7.3, tax penalty waiver request. Tax rule 566-2050, Mr. Thibault. Uh, 
um, all the information for these tax waivers were in Council's package, so unless there were any specific questions for Donna, um, back over to Council to, to make a decision. All right, thank you. Any questions whatsoever? Councillor Beckering. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, question to Donna. Uh, the first uh, application to waive on this particular item is $915.94 is the penalty. Must be a business, is it, Donna? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Some prepared to make a motion. Councilor Beckering. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Prepared to make a motion. But council does not waive the July 3rd, 2024 tax penalty in the amount of $915.94. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carry unanimous. Thank you. On to item 7.4, tax penalty waiver request tax roll 3951280, Mr. Thibault. Again, Don is here for any questions. The tax waiver uh, explanation was in council's package. All right, thank you. Any questions for Donna whatsoever? Councilor Ruffert. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm ready to make the motion. All right. That council does not waive the July 3rd, 2024 tax penalty in the amount of $162.16. Right, thank you, motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Karen Nan was Thank you, thank you, Donna. On to item 7.5, renewed funding commitment for Tabor Civic Center modernization and expansion. Mr. Thibault. Uh, so my understanding is this is a joint effort, but I believe that um, Blake is gonna come forward to Field this, give council maybe a little reminder. This is kind of a repeat of a grant that we went for last year. Um, so I'll hand it over to Blake. All right, thank you, Blake. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Good afternoon. <clears throat> the administration was recently made aware of a new intake of the GICB funding, Green and Inclusive Community Buildings from Infrastructure Canada. The grant is an 80-20 split. Uh, cost sharing opportunity for a retrofit project up to $10 million with Tabor uh, contributing up to a maximum of $2 million. <clears throat> As uh, the CEO uh, mentioned, we previously applied for the intake in 2023, February, and we were unsuccessful. Um, we are again looking for direction from council on this grant opportunity. Are there any questions? All right, thank you, Councillor Beckering. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Reinick, if you were a betting man, what's your chances? Ooh, well, I do not have a crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Infrastructure Canada has been renamed as of this intake to the, uh, they, they've added a bunch of acronyms and stuff. It's really hard to gauge these guys. Um, we, I had talked to other municipalities that were also unsuccessful. And there was zero justification really to us why it was just a no. Um, so it's hard to gauge, but um, again, this is our best opportunity uh, to make a meaningful change there. And I think you, my opinion is you got to jump at these opportunities. So, um, but I can't say with any certainty. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Tibble. Um, just a little bit more to that, Councillor Beckering. We did, um, Blake and uh, our grant writers got together. They have tweaked the information, so it's not a direct reapply with the same information that, that was there last year. So I don't know if they were able to glean something more from other municipalities, but there have been adjustments made to this application. All right, thank you. Councillor Shorson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was just wondering if you had reached out to successful um, communities. Is there any that we know of locally? From my understanding in Alberta, I wasn't able to find anybody that was actually successful. Um, so I can go back and try to reach out, but um, nobody in my, uh, anybody that, that we've talked to were successful. So I would have to go back and look into that. Well, yeah, that's unfortunate, but I think it's a no brainer and I would be uh, supportive of this and I'd be willing to make a motion. All right, thank you. Councilor Brun had a question, but we certainly go with that. Councillor Sorensen, also Councillor Brew. Uh, uh, sorry, Councillor Sorensen took my, my spot there, but I imagine most of these have been approved uh, east of Manitoba. So mm. I, I certainly think we should give our best try to get it. Okay. <laughs> All, right. 
All right, thank you. Councilor Schwartzel? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I would make the motion that council directs administration to pursue the green and inclusive community buildings program grant from Infrastructure Canada to modernize and expand the Civic Center and acknowledge a potential commitment of up to $2 million in matching funding from capital reserves. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Sure, now. Thank you. On to item 7.6, capital project reallocation. Mr. Thibault. I'll have Mr. Munshaw come forward and speak to this one, I believe, or, or is Brian, sure, both of you can come forward. Um, this is in relation to a uh, capital, capital request that was approved uh, last year, and uh, I'll hand it over to Mr. Munshaw and right. Mr. Martin. Thank you. So rec the Recreation Department has a as an approved budget for in the 2024 capital budget to purchase a hot pressure washer. Um, we were for, for the amount of $7,000. We were fortunate enough uh, at the end of last year to purchase one uh, at a local auction. Uh, so we used the operating funds to purchase that pressure washer um, at a greatly reduced cost and it was brand new. So we did, uh, we, we were happy with that. We're now requesting to reallocate the hot pressure hot water pressure washer funds of amount of $7,000 towards the purchase of appliances for the Ken Mac uh, Memorial Sports Complex concession. So that's all we'd like to do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. Any questions arising? Councillor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through to Mr. Martin. Uh, so is the plan to tender this uh, to a contractor to run the concession similar to the as, um, to the arena or other facilities? Yeah, so that was part of the, the, the holdup with us coming to council asking for this. We, we were waiting for the RFP to close, so it closed with no uh, submissions. Mm -hmm. So uh, we want to go ahead, get the appliances, and, and make it more attractive to another uh, group, or we'll, we'll just try and operate it ourselves through the rec department. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions whatsoever? Right, Councillor Sorensen. <coughs> I just think of this as a great idea. There's a lot of people out there, and it'd be nice to offer them some food and beverage. So I'd be willing to make the motion that Council directs administration. Oh, yeah, to cancel the 2024 Capital Hot Water Pressure Washer Project and reallocate the funds of seven thousand dollars to purchase um, commercial grade appliances for the new Ken McDonald concession. All right, thank you. Uh, Councilor McLean also had a question. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so if administrate or Recreation Department was to run that facility, or no, you're not going to run that facility? Or, sorry, you no. just kind of mentioned, like, so then who is going to run it then? Retender yeah, we'll it? retender it, and hopefully we'll get a, a, an association or a group that can run it. Once the appliances are then there, yeah, then they I feel like... Yeah, I think it like probably wasn't quite as attractive <laughs> right, with just an with empty, nothing in it, empty building with, with a sink. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Okay, thank you. For All right, thank you. Councillor Schwartzel? I guess another question would be with the parents of the organizations that are using it, like the football club or baseball or whoever, would they be able to then um, host uh, or sell food out of that kitchen then? Can they rent it out? Potentially. I mean, yeah. if we... Contracted to use it, it would be excluded for them, I would okay. presume, but we, we haven't gotten quite to that point yet. So. Okay. All right, thank you. Questions covered. We do have a motion on the table. All right, motion on the table. All in favor? Carried down. Thank you. Item 7.7 7, 2025 Alberta Summer Games requests. Mr. Tebow. So it looks like we have the same two people at the table. Um, I know this one was. Uh, was uh, requested by by council, and we've attempted to gather as much information as we could from the Coaldale event, and <coughs> drew upon some historical knowledge that we had. So I'll hand it over. All right, thank you. Yes, so, uh, Mayor and Council, uh, a request was made, as as Mr. Tebow mentioned, uh, asking the town of Tabor to consider submitting a, a bid for the upcoming 2025 Summer Alberta Summer Games. So in recent years, Tabor has successfully hosted uh, 
the years of 20, 2005, 2008, 2013, and 18. Uh, I think they did a pretty good job from what I could ascertain from comments I've heard. And uh, this year, as was mentioned also, that Coaldale hosted, um, they received a grant uh, in the amount of $8,000 from, uh, from this, the Southern Alberta Recreation Association and uh, approximately $2 per participant. There was approximately 2,000 participants that uh, participated in their summer games. Um, but that, that number isn't locked, it's, uh, it's variable. It, it's not necessarily how much money we would get. And then uh, the last time Town of Tabor hosted, we, uh, the expenditures uh, totaled around $110,000. Um, so some of the things that uh, administration has looked at uh, with some initial research, uh, we estimate a, a proposed budget of about $180,000 with, with some facility upgrades. Um, facilities uh, such as track, our jumping areas, our beach, and our gymnasium, they possibly don't meet uh, the game standards for playability, so we would have to look at, at doing some upgrades there, which could be between thirty dollars and 50000 additionally. Um, and then we would have some funds to purchase any required equipment needed for the events. Uh, Esports is a new event that's sort of been added since last time we hosted. So there would be some monitors, game consoles, possible seating that would go with that. Um, some of our sports equipment's not up to standard, so we'd have to get some starting blocks, um, hurdles, mats, discuses, that kind of equipment that would be required to do those events. And then some of our timing equipment and our software for tracking purposes would have to be upgraded. Uh, we're looking at extra staffing, um, and so that would that would hit us in administration and operations. And then um, we would need to hire at least one full-time staff member for the summer games coordinator. I know the winter games uh, jobs have just come out for 2026 and they're looking for two, but uh, we've, we've, we're asking for one at this time. Um, and then a number of volunteers, uh, we'd, we'd met with uh, Coaldale and they used 180 volunteers for this summer, but they recommended Having a higher number, they, they recommended between 200 and 250 volunteers uh, to uh, operate it successfully. So we put that in our in our submission too. So uh, for you to consider, um, it uh, we we uh, where did I go? Administration would be interested in approaching the MD of Tabor to ask for a collaboration uh, and a financial commitment to host this in in a joint. And uh, as a side note, the town of Bow Island has shown great interest in hosting the event also, and they are looking at uh, placing a bid too, and potentially a collaboration with somebody to work with them too. So we've, we've contacted them also. All right, thank you. Councilor Rafford? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so we were hosting, it looks like about every five years. So chances are we would have, without COVID, we'd have probably already hosted it, right? So I, I imagine, um, I know the Reeve got three medals in Coldell, so I imagine the MD will help out. She'll want to get some more medals. <laughs> Trail 77 is big, volunteer group. Lacrosse was also a new sport, and I know our lacrosse association is big right now. They're really picked up, so they'll help. The MD's got the shooting range, right, because they didn't do shooting in Coldell. They didn't have a range. And the ball diamond looks like it's in good shape. I can't see how. You know, our facilities are great for this, right? I can't see how this would be something we wouldn't want to do every five years. All right, thank you, Councillor Becker. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, thank you, uh, Councillor Ramford. I, uh, I, on the other hand, <coughs> speak against this proposal. Two reasons mainly, cost, of course. <laughs> and also, if there's a neighboring community who is very interested hosting the summer games, which they've probably not done before in the case of Wall Island, I, I think it would behoove us to collaborate with them to have them hold it and not support that, because we've supported that now four times over the last 16 years. So it's more than four years, Councilor Ramford, not five years, because it was four years there was COVID. So if we hosted in 2025, that'd be five times in 16 years. Holy cow, come on, guys. And so my question would be, uh, who, who asked 
has to submit a bid. The shadow request is made to administration. Who, who, who is that? Uh, so at the end of the summer games when they get hosted, there's usually a passing of the torch and there was no one to pass the torch to. And so there was just some general discussion around the table there between the MD and ourselves. Um, I believe Mr. Mr. Mayor was there. And, and so it kind of got fashioned after that to bring it in front of council and see if there was any interest. Yeah, just to confirm, it was initially brought up at the opening ceremonies, talking with some of uh, the, the MD, Reed, for example, and or uh, recreation uh, attendants as well. And just tossed around the idea that it was confirmed at that point. That's when it first came up that there wasn't anybody to host. And I went to the closing ceremony as well as they, they confirmed there was nothing uh, supportive of anybody going forward with that. So that's kind of where that started. And then some discussions we've had uh, with other council members and our Mr. Thibault as well to get to this stage. Councilor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I share some of the same concerns as Councilor Beckering. Um, I think the games are great. When they were here in 2018, um, I volunteered and there was a significant volunteer base um, that was needed to support that ga those games. And I'm concerned about the burden that it would bring to our volunteer base in our community. We have so many organizations and people um, volunteer willingly, but I hear from a lot of groups that they're, everybody's struggling to find volunteers. And so then to host something like this, that I'm not sure what the uptake would be. Um, I hope that it would be successful, but, um, and the cost as well. Uh, do we have any idea what the Southern Alberta Recreation Association contribution would be? It would be that uh, $8,000 plus the $2,000 per, per participant, but that's <coughs> kind of a guess because they might give more, they might give a little less. Right. So um, right in there. In so we their, don't know. No, and okay. we can only go off what Coldell was given and it was the 8000 mm -hmm. So it's, it's not a, a large amount of money. All right, Councilor Rufford. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I get the, the uh, Councilor Beckering's call of it, you know, six, four times over 16 years. It's 52 years it's been going on. I know that it would have probably been back already, but after COVID, they, they struggled to find somebody, right? So if they are, you know, I understand why it's wanting to, but if they don't, I believe the Southern Alberta Summer Games, a 52 year thing, is something you know, great for Southern Alberta. And I think we're a bigger center and hosting it five times in 52 years is probably on average with most of the communities. Maybe we've done it a little bit more on this back end, but I, you know, I don't want to go back to 1976 and start counting or whenever 50 years back is. Um, so I'm willing to make the motion All right, uh, Councilor Swerfson also had a question, though. Just do you want the motion first? Okay. You can do it, yeah, if you're ready. Yeah. Sure. I'll, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion that Council directs administration to complete the bid process for the 2025 Alberta Summer Games to be hosted by the Town of Tabor, and Council directs administration to approach the MD of Tabor to co-host co the 2025 Alberta Summer Games and come back to Council at a future date fundraising or funding request if the bid for the 2025 Alberta Summer Games is successful. All right. Thank you. Councillor Sorensen. Now my turn. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I would be in support of hosting it. Um, it's not just what it costs the community, but what it brings to the community and it supports all our local businesses, all our facilities. Um, we have like one of the top three people um, actually um, uh, participating in the summer games too, like all of the uh, adults and children and so forth. And um, collaborating with the MD, I think is a great idea because, you know, again, like uh, the more the merrier and making this event successful and we'd be using some of their facilities also. So I'd be in support of hosting it. All right, thank you, Councillor Beckering. <coughs> yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. In case of, uh, if this motion would happen to pass and the MD of Tabor says no, uh, 
we're not willing to collaborate, or yes, we are willing to collaborate, but, but just to a certain extent. What happens then, Mr. Mayor, or to the mover? Your, your question is to me. <laughs> I don't know if I can answer that question completely, but uh, I guess cross that bridge when we come to. But uh, Chief Munshaw, you had a yeah, if I can add to that comment. Sure. So where you're sitting, whether it's a, if this bid was a, approved by council this time, we'd put the bid in. We'd still have to come back to council at the budget time to ask for this money that you've actually initially seen. We'd do a full budget analysis. We'd bring it towards you. You'd have to pass that budget then. But even if council has denied the moving forward with this and Bo Island was the winning bid, they're going to need a lot of help and help from us. So we are going to see quite a few games come into the community to help out Bo Island, including shooting areas, including different areas that they don't have. So we're going to still come back to you and say there's probably a funding request need even at that point in time. Let's hope that helps. All right, thank you. You know what? Very well thought out how you presented here. This afternoon, gentlemen, um, I don't know. I, I, I'm very much in favor of supporting the motion. I, I don't think you can ever uh, showcase your community enough. You got a chance to do that, particularly when it's been on hold for five years just since uh, 219 was a, the one previous. And, um, you know, just being in, in Coley, that was just a, a very, very uh, electric charged atmosphere with the 1,800 plus athletes and Anywhere from the, uh, I don't know, five or six year old kids competing in, in whatever sports of their choice to the, uh, the older adults in the uh, cribbage category, for example, some other new categories they had there for uh, seniors as well. So it's quite, uh, quite all encompassing for all involved. And as Councillor Sorensen said, it really helps showcase and support the, uh, the business venture as well. And, and uh, we have that chance. It's n no guarantee in an application either, but, but we have that chance. So to me, it's, it's uh, more than uh, worthwhile to, to go forward and pursue. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I know I can't speak for the MD, but I'm <coughs> quite sure they'd be in favor of this. Um, it highlights our shooting range and our, our, our district. And uh, I, I too would support the fact of hosting the summer games here in Tabor. Proud of our community. I'd like to show it off. All right. Thank you, Councillor Brewer. And Councillor Firth? As was, has been stated, there are many positives to hosting the games as well. Um, but again, my hesitation is around volunteers. So I hope that any councillors that are voting in favour of this motion would be willing to uh, step up and give their time and volunteer as part of the Summer Games. <laughs> All right, fair statement, Councillor First. Thank you, Councillor Rempert. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. On top of that, I hope we all participate. Then also, right? Because I'll be coming. I'll be coming back with five. I'll be coming back with five medals. So just a heads up. Um, but going to uh, <coughs> Councillor Beckery's comment about if the MD didn't put put in, right? Um, Sir Munchaw did bring up that if Wyland gets it, they would come to us maybe for funding. If we got it and the MD said, I guess we don't want to go with you, I guess after the budget, we would still probably go to them for funding. So we would, it would be, I believe, very, I don't want to say tough for them, but it would be hard for them, I imagine, for us to do it, want to use their facilities and them not contribute. So I can't see them not being on board. All right, thank you. All the questions covered, Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Kind of sitting on the fence here. I I understand the appeal. I really do, and I I think it's a great thing to support. But I also struggle with the amount of money and the upgrades that we have to do to um, be able to facilitate their requirements. Because part of me wants to like put that money into thing. I understand that things could be upgraded and always, you know, and improved for sure. But is that where we want our money going into those kinds of things versus maybe something else has a bigger need? I don't know, you know, and so I, I'm struggling on that part and also the volunteer base. I feel like it is putting a huge strain on the community to do that. 
Um, it, it's asking a lot, especially when they say, you know, 200 to 250 people to volunteer and Coaldale couldn't get that. And they were like, it would actually be a huge benefit if you could get that many people. But that's a, a big ask, I think. And that's kind of hard to then go to the community and say, hey, we've made the decision to put in this bid, you know, and then if we're successful, we get the bid. It's like, okay, now you guys all have to step up, you know, and then if you don't get it, then you kind of feel like, ooh, ooh, you know, that extra strain on, like, then it doesn't go as as well as you planned or hoped it to be. So I guess those are kind of just where I'm sitting is I do support the idea, and I think <coughs> it's a great thing to support, and I understand that, and I think the summer games are a good, good thing for everybody to participate in. But at the same time, there are these strains that I'm just kind of like, hmm, I don't know, you know, like, where do we put our money and where do we put our our um, rec department's time and energy as well? All right. Thank you. Councilor Schwarzel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And just a couple comments. Like, instead of purchasing um, this equipment, could we use it from schools or other um, clubs instead of actually, you know, paying for the town to own some of this equipment that you were talking about having to upgrade? Uh, yeah, we could probably borrow or lend, you know, rent, whatever the case might be. Um, we just want to make sure we're covered in case it's not available. We don't want to have to come back to you and ask for, right. for more funds because we're short of some equipment. So we just want to make sure we're kind of hitting the bases as well as we can. And just a comment, like I feel that our community rallies no matter what we throw at them. And I really um, believe in my heart that we'd be able to get the volunteers. And, you know, this community supports almost everything we throw at it. And I thank them for that. So I think we can do it. All right. Thank you. Councillor Brew. You know, uh, Councillor McLean is talking about uh, having to spend money on our facilities and that. But. Well, I've always remembered in the past, it was nice to have a reason to fix up some of our facilities and the town looks better for it. So I still support the motion and I think we should vote on it. All right, thank you. As long as we got the questions covered, yeah. We do have a motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. All right, uh, on to item 7.8, funding request stars. Mr. Thibault. So I'll speak to this one best I can. Uh, if council recalls, STARS organization was here uh, in January, and they came with a per capita request of the town of Tabor. Uh, council accepted that, uh, their presentation as information, and, uh, and that was that. Uh, so it's been past six months. STARS has, they're not coming for a delegation this time, but they had sent in a, uh, a letter that was attached for council's consideration, uh, looking again for a contribution of a dollar per capita. Um, so I, I don't really have any additional information. I, I know that we do, and we discussed last time, there is some support that was provided um, through the Tabor Charity Auction that does make its way through to STARS, which we discussed last time. But I don't have a whole bunch more information with respect to that. So over to council for discussion. All right, thank you, Mr. Chief. Could you, could you just clarify? Do you know what that is? I know that we did talk about that previous, I believe, about some stars involvement through charity auctions. Do we know the amount roughly? What what uh, we are supporting in that regard? Um, so uh, Mr. Munch and I had spoke about that, thinking that question might come our way. It looks to be if you average it out over the. 26 years that that's been happening, it looks to be about $38,000 a year that heads their direction. So we're just shy of about, it's about $960,000 that has happened through the charity auction to STARS. $38,000 a year average? We about, yeah, the average is, so it's been as high as 50000 as low as 38000 But I will hmm. I will say that's not directly from the town of Tabor, right? So, so council puts forward $1,500 for us to buy a gift to give to the charity auction, yeah. which is then sold off for double or sometimes triple that amount. Oh, uh, okay. And then there's the involvement of the <clears throat> Tabor Fire Department, which which operates a couple of different things, you know, on their own time, on sometimes on, on work time with the volunteers. Uh, and so I don't really have the math for that, but I would say that directly the town of Tabor probably provides more than that dollar per capita currently. 
through the Chamber of Charity Auction. Right. And I think if we remember a bit of the discussion last time, do we contribute another time in addition to that? Do we not, con we don't really have control over what happens at Stars Auction, so that money will still end up heading that direction without us being, the only thing we could control is maybe the fire department doesn't do their volunteer sort of thing for Stars, but I, that's the only really direct control we have over that type of money. Yeah, it, uh, it goes to stars, but also other things within the community, right? So it's kind of split up accordingly. All right, thank you. Councillor Firth? <coughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through to Mr. Thibault. Um, have we contributed to HALO in the past? And if we have, do we know how much? I'd love to lie to you and say I know that answer, but I don't, I don't actually know that answer. I don't know that HALO, did they cover this area? Are we kind of in that zone where sometimes it's them and sometimes it's... I, I don't they, remember. They do cover this area, yeah. Yeah, I, I, really, I, I certainly can go back and look and see what, what that looks like, but I don't know the answer right now. We haven't in the past, to Donna's knowledge. All right, thank you, Councillor McLean. Um, thanks, Mr. Mayor. You asked my question of how much they get from the charity auction, so that was just, I was just trying All right, to thank you, Councillor Rufford. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As I remember when they were here, we were they were one banquet away from breaking a million bucks. So going to Mr. Tebow's, he's very close because they were just a fraction away of hitting the million dollar mark of donating from the, uh, the Tabor Charity Auction. So that's where they're at over the 25 years is a million bucks. Um, I know lots of communities or lots of businesses help that Tabor Charity Auction. I don't know if this deters from people helping knowing that $8,000 goes to it too, but I wouldn't want to mess anything up for them. You know, maybe the administration needs to ask them, maybe they need to be part of the discussion a little bit. I don't, I don't know. So I know that lots of people help out in the town with them. All right. Thank you. Councillor Shorten. Uh, just to continue the conversation, I know that the stars or the community uh, auction does support both Halo and Stars, so like just through that, if we support that auction, then not only does it benefit Stars and Halo, but all of our community groups also. So I think it's half and half to to both. Um, and so I'm a little bit on the fence too, because I can just see the true benefit of the auction, and for us to deter with this decision, I just want to support um, that auction and that initiative that our uh, citizens are doing every year. All right, thank you, Councillor Brown. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, you know, I thought quite a bit about this and uh, the number of people I know personally who have flown on stars or the people's families who have been affected because someone they loved was flown on stars. I was uh, flown to Calgary on a fixed wing aircraft. My mother was as well. Uh, it's such a valuable um, service to our community, and uh, I think I don't think it'll deter anyone from bidding at the auction because it's one dollar per person that they're donating to Stars, and I, I really feel this is something we should support. Um, Halo is very important as well. They serve more, I think, of the eastern side of the MD of Tabor, not the town itself. And a number of times I've seen Stars or Stars helicopter land at the airport or the possible here. It's amazing. And if stars comes, you know that person has a chance. Because they will not come to a, an accident scene or the hospital if there's a chance the person may not survive. So uh, I, I fully support stars and I think a dollar person per citizen isn't going to affect stars auction. And I think we should probably contribute to this fund. All right, thank you. Councillor Becker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree fully with Council Bruin. I think the $1 per capita is reasonable. It's the minimum, at least, that we can give, I think. And the fact that there's a charity auction is not going to deter, like Jack said. I don't think it's going to deter uh, people making a, a less of a contribution to the charity as opposed to the $1 per capita. And also, we just finished talking about $180,000 summer games. Come on, let's support this. All right, fair enough, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Right, Councillor Brown. Uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, something I'd like to add, and I think most of us know it, but we're one of the few communities that actually has our emblem 
on Star's helicopter because of our generosity to them. So it means a lot to the town table, I think, to support Star's. All right, so I'm prepared to make a motion. <clears throat> Councilor Bruin. I'll make that motion, Mr. Sorry, I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor, that uh, Council choose to donate, or I'm sorry, I gotta find the right one. Council donates to Stars Foundation an uh, amount of 8,000. Based on the, I guess, I'm sorry, I have to think this through my head a little bit. Based on the uh, 2021 Statistics Canada calculations, amount of $8,862, and consider doing this yearly in the budget. It's a little rough, maybe. In future funding. Where it's coming from? I would say from capital for this year. Operating budget for next year. Exactly how I meant to say it. Yes, it's got it covered. Yeah. <laughs> you you can. Thank you. I'm yes. sorry. I, I was looking at the alternatives there, and I was trying to figure out which one I wanted. Um. I'd like to make the motion that council choose to become a star sponsor in the amount of $8,862 with funds to come from the capital budget, capital reserve, sorry. Right. And request the administration place the $8,862 in future operating budgets going forward. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried unanimous. Thank you. Councillor Broom. Sorry for the fumbling on that motion. I was just trying to find All the right. right alternative, and, okay. and I saw the amount wasn't there, and I had to dig through to find that. You got it. You got it. All right, on to item 7.9, uh, WWTP fermenter repair, Mr. Tebow. Uh, we'll get Mr. Egan to come forward and uh, talk some more money with Council. All right. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Good afternoon. <clears throat> so the uh, WWTP is the Wastewater Treatment Plant, and uh, that Wastewater Treatment Plant is a biological nutrient removal plant in order to treat the water to meet uh, Alberta provincial specifications. Uh, part of the process that we use is a fermenter which acts on the sludge to remove total phosphorus content. It's a biological process, and uh, unfortunately that uh, mechanical device failed in June and uh, did some damage to the interior of the fermenter and the mechanical parts. Uh, we did have uh, our uh, engineering contractors, MPE, do an initial review, which is the report you see attached to this item. Uh, to give us a ballpark of uh, what we should be looking at, uh, the general uh, scope of requirements uh, as far as the repairs to get the, uh, that part of the plant back in operation. Uh, we, uh, the plant operation staff have uh, jury-rigged a temporary uh, process which involves chemical uh, uh, injection into our waste stream which performs the same function but uses a fairly expensive uh, chemical dosing instead of a, a biological process, which happens naturally. Uh, so we're incurring uh, operating costs uh, in order to uh, continue to meet that provincial requirements. The other uh, impact is we're diverting approximately 50% of the waste stream to the lagoons in order to uh, minimize the chemicals used and, and uh, as you recall, we also have in the plant, the secondary clarifiers are offline in order to, uh, or the capital project that was approved in 2022. Um, we're getting parts for that plant repair in October. And we, that'll be done uh, early in the next year to complete that capital project, but we have two critical components of the process offline. And so uh, we're at very high risk of uh, having divert all of the waste stream to the lagoon if there's any 
additional incidental failures in the next six months or so. It'll, it'll take about six months in order to, so it's not a short process, to do the detailed engineering review, uh, complete a tender for uh, several items of equipment and uh, basic plant, the concrete structure repairs. So it's not a fast and simple process. Uh, we have an estimate at this point in time, or a budget that we're asking for of $350,000 uh, to complete all the review, design, and repairs. And so that is the, the nature and the circumstances that uh, we have in front of you at this point in time. All right, thank you, Councilor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just had a couple of questions. Okay, so if we were to divert all of our waste to the lagoons, what are the consequences of doing that? Uh, so uh, typically we don't, uh, the, the lagoons are primarily for the industrial waste stream. And uh, so all that effluent uh, flows there and is treated in a long-term process. So we're, we're actually quite fortunate that we have a siphon that allows us to do this. Most plants actually can't divert their industrial or separate streams. And so it's, it's a very temporary issue. Uh, the problem is filling the lagoons up uh, for next summer and not being, the, those lagoons were not allowed to put that water back in the river. That, those lagoons, the effluent coming out of there is, we're permitted to use it to irrigate crops in the five quarter sections of land that uh, we operate uh, to the north east of town. So uh, we're, we're playing a little bit of a balancing act. There's, there's no, uh, if things continue on the way they are, we'll have the clarifier project completed. We'll complete uh, repairs to the fermenter or alternatively create and uh, design and install a chemical injection system. Um, and so, uh, but we're, we're, uh, we're quickly running out of alternatives. So we've have a jury-rigged system on a jury-rigged system at this point in time. All right, thank you, Councillor Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Egan. Um, ever since I've been elected, um, this department has had a lot of um, failures or repairs and maintenance, and that's tacked on to now um, our uh, infrastructure costs. And is there like a, an asset management plan that you guys have developed? It just seems like Maybe some of these uh, failures could have been foreseen with maintenance and so forth. And do you guys have an action plan moving forward for us to be better prepared so we don't have to, you know, be in these emergency situations of dealing with uh, cash flow? So we don't have a plan at this particular moment in time. Uh, the, the software program that we purchased last year uh, has the capacity to confirm all the components of the plan, for us to do condition assessment, assessments of each component, analyze its lifespan, and through various ways, be a little bit more predictive and try and get into, uh, away from reactive maintenance, uh, into more predictive maintenance and predict predictive capital renewal. Um, so we do preventative maintenance, and the operators do that on the plant right now. Um, the issues with the fermenter, um, wouldn't have been able to be predicted because that's a closed system by design when the original fermenter was installed 15 years ago. Um, it's a fairly dangerous to people process because it produces H2S gas. And so we don't go into the fermenter. There is no access port and panel uh, to do uh, condition assessment and, and repairs as required. Um, and then the clarifier, that uh, probably likely would have been picked up on a life, uh, uh, a planned obsolescence kind of an approach because that component is as old as the plant is. And, uh, and uh, so we're replacing the bridges on that. So we're looking at that now. We don't have the manpower to do it. Um, certainly uh, it falls within our capabilities to do it uh, because we're doing that with the public works linear assets that we've got, and we'll bring an example of that to council through uh, the 2025 budget process where we'll have a 10-year plan built on the capital asset management plan for the sidewalks, that particular linear asset, 
but there's a large um, workload uh, that we don't aren't able to support right now to identify all the components, put them in the system, then do condition assessments, put those in the system so that the systems, typical asset management system software can do some predictive 10-year uh, annual capital plans for renewals. If I can just comment. Sure. Yeah, to me, and this is just my comment, water is more important than sidewalks. So my my concern is that we should probably, if, if you know, you need the money to do that, I would, um, yeah, urge you administration to come back with that because it seems like it's something that is a necessity to the community. But that's just my comment. All right. Thank you. Councillor Becker? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Excellent uh, question and comment by Councillor Sorensen and excellent answer also, uh, Mr. Reed. What I don't, what I don't agree with is that you know you're dealing with a corrosive material, very corrosive material, and you have a fermenter which is enclosed, and you, I know it's very dangerous because of least low gases, but for heaven's sake, there's got to be some other, someone says, this thing is 15 years old, let's go check it out, guys, before we spend $350,000. Certainly, somebody must have thought of that, no? Uh, yes, yeah, the plant, as we reviewed, uh, did lessons learned on the failure and understood what the failure really came from. Pipe hangers were corroded and dropped into the mechanical operations of the fermenter and, and caused the, the uh, mechanical system to fail, and mostly the pipe racks to break and the pipes, the feeder pipes uh, to break. Um, the original design of the fermenter and installation didn't allow any access into it to do these inspections, either remotely or uh, using confined space and H2S protocol. So we can do it. Uh, we're assessing uh, if we should build that capability into uh, the replacement design, which will allow us to, uh, to uh, be a little bit more predictive. Um, the alternative is just to understand that every and or 15 years, we're going to pull it apart, stop it, pull it apart, and uh, replace and rework the entire system. So uh, we, are, we are considering uh, both issues, and we are considering uh, uh, utilizing asset management predictive strategies to uh, work on all of our plans. All right, thank you. Councillor Bruin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think this isn't a matter, you know, it's something we have to do. I, like, we, you know, we gotta, we've got to do this, whether we could have prevented it by monitoring things a little closer. Looking at the pictures here, it seems that some of this stuff was obviously, obviously failing and it needed attention sooner. Um, my question on this is, uh, is there a specific company that does this type of work or can we farm this out to local welding contractors here that, you know, they build high pressure vessels and, yeah definitely more than capable of doing any welding here. Yeah, it it's, doesn't require specialty contractors. Like with for, the H2S of that, like is it, it'll be all aired out so it's safe for the workers yep. in there? Because yep. I, I know there's a number of businesses yep. here in town that I think would love to be able to work on some of this and we may be able to save money by using them. Yeah, because of uh, Tabor's uh, linkage to oil field, we're Many of our contractors are very well versed in H2S safety practices. Yeah, and, and so I think won't, that be, won't be scared off on that aspect in completing this work. Plus, this work um, is primarily structural steel yeah. and fabrication, so miscellaneous metals and structural steel stuff. So, I think we have several companies in town that could easily perform the work. Yeah, and that, that's good because I think Calgary maybe learned a lesson with their pipeline repair. Uh, they ended up calling in the oil companies that work on pipelines every day to fix the things and uh, I think uh, we obviously have to do this so I think you know we can talk all we want about it but I think we got to make a motion that we do this and do it sooner and later and get it done. Right. You're prepared to make the, the I'm motion. prepared to try to make a motion yeah. again. That uh, council approves the project budget not to exceed $350,000 to repair the damaged firmware at the wastewater treatment plant and fund the pro project through capital reserves. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried now. Thank you.
Right, on to item 710, information for council. Mr. Thiebaud. Um, so as discussed previously, we try and bring the capital projects forward uh, about every quarter. And so this is the status of the capital projects. Um, just, just as a sort of a side note to council, this is uh, as close as we can get to what's happening currently out there right now. So, so this capital projects listing, uh, as opposed to what we see through finance, there would be some differences because finance needs to wait for invoices to do reporting. This reporting, a lot of it is happening before invoices actually arrive. So this is going through project managers and stuff like that. So if you happen to notice there's a difference somewhere financially versus this capital projects listing, this listing is as up to date as the people that are working on it can give us. So over to council if there's any questions around any of the items. All right, thank you. Any questions arising? Councilor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just confirming that when projects are completed under budget, it goes back into capital reserves. Is that correct? Then that, those monies? Yep, that's correct. Anything that is not used, that council approves, uh, has to go back into the capital reserves and gets recycled for the next usage. Okay, lovely. Because I just noticed like that the Lagoon Solar System, like the solar PV system, was like almost like not quite but just about a hundred thousand dollars under budget and same with another UTV replacement was another ten thousand dollars under budget so I just then I'm grateful that maybe then that can go towards our three hundred fifty thousand dollar project that we just had to pay for so thank you <laughs> all right thank you any other questions all right so no motion required on to 711 department reports I'll go through them individually. If you have a question, please advise. First off, CEO report. Recreation reports. Councillor Sorensen. I think that this is where it's listed about, there are 500 new auditorium chairs. So I've always heard that perhaps they needed to be upgraded and um, hope everyone enjoys the new chairs. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you, and to confirm they're here, Grant. <laughs> Great. All right, uh, on to economic development report. Engineering and public works report. Treatment facilities report. Facilities management department report. Planning department report. Fire department reports. HR department reports. Councilor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. What is council's employee recognition event? Uh, so each year we have an employee recognition that's, <coughs> that's supported by council financially. And um, I think just the mayor came this year for um, recognizing the employee's length of service and um, just a, a meal that's provided to them. Typically we've done it over at the curling. Oh, at the curling. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. So that's, that's okay. sort of the once a year event. That's what that's speaking to. All right. Uh, finance report reports. Administrative service report. <coughs> it's got her covered. All right. Councilor Brown. Just a question on our, um, residential collection update where we see our general waste at 38%, our compost at 45%. Is there a graph that shows if we're gaining or are we losing more more recycling? People are not recycling as they used to. It seems like that number is getting smaller. Is, is recycling kind of falling on the wayside or are we holding our own on that? Can administration get back to you on... We don't know that comparison rate this moment, but Lisa, once we talk with her, she could tell us what that looks like. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know because it seemed, it was so good when it first started, um, and I think we are kind of falling off. I know personally, if I can speak for myself, I'm not recycling near as much as I should be, and it, it uh, definitely does save taxpayers a lot of money the more we recycle, so it might be something to check into and see if we can improve that. All right, thank you. Moving on to item 712, Mayor and Council Reports. Councillor Sorensen, can I start with you, please? 
Sure, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I hope everyone's had a good summer and nice to see everyone again. Um, I did attend the Joint Economic uh, um, Committee meeting and we discussed the Tabor t uh, table and how successful that event was. So thank you to administration and all those involved who participated to make that night special. Um, I did attend a joint meeting with the MD and uh, the Mayor and Councillor Firth with uh, Premier um, Smith and MLA Grant Hunter. Um, so that was um, informative and hopefully we can get some more items um, showcased for our region. And then I just wanted to mention that Corn, uh, Corn Fest is gonna be here um, starting on uh, Thursday, August 22nd. So hopefully everyone, I'll see you down there and uh, the Tabor Parade's at 4 p.m. to kick off the event. All right, thank you, Councillor Rufford. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Friday is the Bullorama at the Agriplex. It is unreal. It is fun. It's worth going to. It's, it's, a, it's still a free event, right? Because I think it's got to be for uh, Cornfest to, to, to fund it a little bit. Um, and then there's a Meals on Wheels on Saturday fundraiser. I'm on the table in Richard Housing. Now, it is at the Royal Hotel. Not that I'm hoping that it's there, but I am part of the Meals on Wheels thing. But it is at <laughs> Saturday, noon till three. All right. All right. Thank you. Kelsey Shorson? Well, if you're going to highlight your meals on wheels, the Bolarama is sponsored by local businesses to make it free yes, for yes. those to participate. There you go. And Good yeah. point. Perhaps maybe our tech coding is yes. uh, yeah. a sponsor. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Councilor Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will do my best to support Meals on Wheels through donations or yeah, attending sure attending the local establishment yeah. that is so honored to host it. Um, I had a, a fairly quiet time. I attended the MPC uh, uh, meetings and uh, I don't think really any other meetings that were on because of the summer holidays. Um, I would uh, like to send my condolences to the Tams family on the passing of former Councillor Louie. I attended his funeral here last week, and uh, I'd just like to say that he is a fine fellow and he will be missed. All right, thank you. Councillor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I also attended the Tabor's Table event uh, put on by the Joint Economic Development Committee downtown. It was a beautiful, um, beautiful event. It was a hot day, but it was <laughs> the food didn't get cold, so that was good. Um, I also attended the Sterling Settler Days Parade. Um, and the joint meeting as well as uh, Councillor Sorensen and you, Mr. Mayor, uh, with the MD, MLA, Grant Hunter, and Premier Danielle Smith. Um, I attended the Trail 77 Rowan Becky uh, Mountain Bike Park grand opening, uh, the Medicine Hat Rodeo Parade, Colehurst Miners Days Parade, um, just this past Saturday, the Picture Butte Jamboree Days Parade, and also um, the funeral for Mr. Louis Tam. So I just wanted to um, thank him for his service to our community and send condolences to his family. Thanks. All right, thank you, Councillor Beckering. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to also echo the sentiments expressed by Council Bruin and Council Firth regarding my good friend Louis Tam, who passed away un rather unexpectedly. And condolences to his family and loved ones. Very quiet month, otherwise, Mr. Mayor, I only attended one meeting, the Audit Committee meeting, which Council Sorensen also attended, which we forgot to talk about, was a good one. Mm -hmm. I was gone on holidays for <coughs> almost two weeks, so let's carry on to the new year. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Councilor McLean. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I also attended the um, JEDC meeting, which we are soon to be um, a committee that can apply for grants because we are considered a not-for-profit committee. So we can then apply for more grants for this area, which is great and exciting. Um, I also attended the Canada Day celebration, and even though it kind of all got moved inside, it was still a great event. And it was also appreciated that the MD also supported more money for the fireworks that day, which was fun to see. It was a good event. Um, Trail 77 grand opening for the pump track also was a very well attended event. And it was really fun for the kids too. It was, they did a really good job and the pump track out there looks great. And that is my report. All right, thank you. 
And for myself, I uh, did attend uh, several new business visits with uh, Amy uh, and, and or Elviro on the committee. Also attended the Tim Hortons Camp Day event. Attended the Tabor Table event as well. Very nice event, very well done, very well received. Also uh, attended with Councilor Shorts in the Tabor area farm visit as well. And that was a very nice tour and uh, dinner event. I did also attend the Premier Smith, Premier Daniel Smith, uh, along with Grant Hunter, Emily Grant Hunter, and other council members in attendance as well, Councilor Firth, Councilor Sorensen. And uh, that was very well received and uh, very pleasant gal. I believe we had, uh, had a very good meeting with, with her and Grant and hope for some uh, better connections in the future as well, attached to that. I did also tell, attend the Trail 77 Rowan Becky Skills Pump Track Grand Opening event. I, uh, along with Councilor Renford, also attended the Norcrest Provincial Ball Tournament opening ceremony at Ken McDonald Park. <laughs> that was very well done and very well received. Six teams involved there and the provincial championships went very well. I also attended the uh, Communities in Blue Lunch Invite uh, annual event at the Vligger residence this year. Attended the uh, Phase 1 Coldia Walking Trail and Bike Path Grand Opening. And I attended the Cold Ale and participated in the Summerfest Candy Parade and Barbecue in uh, Cold Ale this uh, past weekend. I did also attend the FCSS Homestead Manor Ice Cream Social, as well as the uh, Clearview Lodge Resident Family Barbecue Annual Event. And I attended a, uh, a meeting with the uh, MD of Tabor Victim Services, the, the Tabor Police Service, along with Mr. Thibault and or Emily Grant Hunter. And I also uh, attended the uh, uh, Mr. Louis Tam's uh, funeral service and my condolences to the Tam's family as well. And that would be my report. Unless there's any other questions on any reports, nothing further. Moving on. <laughs> Close. On to uh, item 713, standard item council requests. Mr. Thibault. Okay, we are getting closer to completed. Um, Councillor Firth, there, there has actually been some progress on, on your, your request, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll be probably providing a fairly good update in September uh, with some facts attached to that. Uh, we have completed the 48th Street North, the, the parking. Um, I have made note of that every time I go back and forth from that there's there's not there's vacancy there almost almost all the time that I've seen uh, so in the morning when I arrive of course at lunchtime there's there's plenty of vacancy um, and and after I go home from work again I travel that every day multiple times um, plus other staff members are also monitoring that as was requested by council so I consider that one complete um, Councillor Sorensen we completed the investigation to the secondary education last time and uh, we are still we had the program or the procurement program or procedure almost ready to go but wasn't quite ready in time for this so we will bring that forward at the next council meeting um, maybe more people will be in attendance in September anyways to to have a listen to, to that uh, and uh, Council Bruin we uh, did supply that motocross track with a town of Tabor flag um, I think we did it the very the very next day that, that they were in. So their initial request uh, that administration fielded was the, the, the ask or our understanding the ask was to auction the flag off, which is why we weren't so much in favor of providing a flag. Um, so I don't know if that's the case or not, but that wasn't the same information we got when they came in to pick it up the second time. So um, administration apologizes if we didn't understand the request properly the first time. So, so that's it, and over to council, and if they had, I would really hope that they don't have much to add to my list, because I'm getting it smaller. Anyways, thank you. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Councilor Bruin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, on the, the, the flag issue and that, it, uh, uh, Mrs. Colgin was going to extend an invite to council to attend uh, one of the motocross evenings on Tuesdays, 
but she has not returned her call to me yet today on the time. But it is going to come to an end soon. I think it would be kind of neat if council could attend a Tuesday night motocross event just to see what they do out there and just it's kind of scary for some but uh, they really run a really good organization out there and the kids love it and the maintenance on the track and I think the well that they've dug out there is probably done now um, they were going to hit water I'm assuming but it was taking a little bit of time but I think it'd be uh, you know a good thing for council to show some interest in the track out there and have a look at you would not believe the number of campers were there the last time I was out when they had the event. That whole grass area was full of, of motorhomes and campers. It brings a lot of uh, money into the community, and it's something we kind of don't pay a lot of attention to. So I'll wait for Mrs. Colgin to get back to me with a, 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 a day she would like us to come out, and I'll email it to the rest of council. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Councillor Firth? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through to Mr. Thibault. Um, I appreciate the update. Um, <coughs> I'm trying to be patient. I know that the planning department is very busy and that's great, that's really good news, but I am very eager to hear what valuable information we can gain from that, um, that survey so that we can improve our processes even further. So looking forward to the meeting in September. Thank you. <coughs> All right, thank you, Councilor McLean. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was just wondering if we had an update on the trees out at the trout pond if they are going to be planted and when that is going to be planted. Do you have an update on that, Mr. Munchal? <laughs> uh, yeah, I can update a little bit on that. So uh, the word's been given out and the trees are in process. It's just waiting for the proper time. Water has to go in. If we plant too early, then obviously we're going to plant be planting live trees that will soon be dead so yeah. yeah we just have to delay that just to make sure we do not plant them in a very dry part of the season okay all right thank you councillor Swordson. <coughs> thank you mr mayor and what's the list if you don't have things on it mr <laughs> tebow <That's right. laughs> so um i just want to go back to um the the water department and the planning and instead of being um, reactive, I would like to be proactive, so I would like to make uh, a motion um, for uh, administration to um, provide an in-depth analysis of their assets and the life expectancy of these assets, and maybe like a five or ten year plan uh, for maintenance so that we can be better prepared. So All right. What I'd like to make a motion on, please. Sure. Okay. That's got it covered. Okay, all right, motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Yep. Sorry, sorry, yep. Councillor Becker had a question also. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank you, Mr. So, Mayor. Did you request uh, Councillor Sorensen just for the water or is it for the whole infrastructure? Well, for the wastewater treatment plant. Oh, so, but there's a difference there, right? There's a wastewater water treatment plant water. and there's a water right. and there's a, right. and there's a okay. sewer. So and everything? It's a, it's, so a it's a very comprehensive. <laughs> it's a very comprehensive study that has to be done because it's going to take a long time. It's going to be very expensive. Let me tell you that now. Yeah. Well, I just think it's expensive for us as a council to all all of a sudden come yeah, right. up with these millions of dollars too. Um, so I'm not sure what scope we want to do. If um, there's uh, maybe administration can direct me as to um, what wouldn't. What would be the first step? Um, if I if I may, maybe um, council could be asking administration to come back with with your last request as far as what it is that that um, council would exactly be after. So so administration can come forward with some further information that would inform you on what it is that you have just asked for. It's not a small ask. Uh, it, it's actually quite a large ask with, with a, a lot of moving parts. So I, I can tell you administration has been working towards that. Mm -hmm. And the reason why sidewalks came up first is because that's information that we readily have available for us. It was easy to put into the asset management system. Mm -hmm. The asset management system is a system that grows over time. Uh, we did purchase it. Council has you know, previously asked to do these sort of assessments and things like that. Um, and the asset management system we have will eventually provide that information, but it is a long-term process. And so, will administration can bring back some next steps yeah. uh, and, and point maybe council towards 
I would like to be a bit more pointed because you know every system and every component is is we, you guys will, we don't have enough money <laughs> like in 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 a lot of years and so uh, we can certainly come back with something that provides a little more a little more scope and a little more depth uh, to see if that's what you're after so we can certainly look at you know if the water treatment plants is important or the wastewater uh, wastewater plant water treatment plant what what, what things are most important um, and we can certainly prioritize that but uh, it, it would be a large long list yeah All right. I, sorry if Let's i forget. can continue sure. i think it's just <coughs> like a, a a step forward in what you already have planned but you know we keep on getting these surprises and i just would like to be a little bit more informed or prepared so we can make better decisions so i know it's cumbersome but i think it's something that just needs to be um, a work in progress so i can appreciate an administration providing any information they can in moving forward. All right. Thank you, Councillor McLean. Oh, okay. Just for a new item. Okay. All right. Thank you. Councillor Rumford. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I walked through the water treatment plant on the south side of town with the Siwa Council this evening for their delegation. And yes, I can see that there maybe needs to be something, but it is a huge system. Like how the guy talked and did the thing, like there's a lot of parts they've abandoned and the clarifier and all that. I can see it big, but I can see that there's going to be some need down the future of doing something with it. So I see where you're going, coming from, and I support that. Because, but it, from what it, from what it, how it was talked at the, the tour, it was very, very expensive to build a whole new one. That's why it's kind of been kind of, one spot was abandoned. We went through that had been kind of refurbished. It was a, the, the, the center kept being refurbished. So I can see where you're coming from over there, trying to figure out. What it looked like it was very expensive. Yeah, if we can yep. just budget, be, yep. be better prepared yep. in yep. budgeting for these um, yeah, repairs that. and maintenance. All right, thank you. We do have a motion on the table. Any further yeah. discussion? You got another question? Um, what's your the motion again? Okay. for administration to provide an in-depth analysis of their assets and life expectancy of assets and to provide a 10-year plan. All right, Councillor Brill. I think um, like what uh, Mr. Thibault was saying there that uh, that's a big ask. So maybe we should, uh, I can't support that motion just because of the huge ask that it is. Um, perhaps the way Mr. Thibault suggested that council or administration brings to council further information on what we should be investigating because it is huge. Like infrastructure, our water pipelines, our sewer pipelines, all that. That it, it would be a big project and it costs a lot of money. You'd probably almost need MPE involved and whatnot. So that, that is a, quite a big ask. So I, I can't support the motion the way it reads. All right, Councillor Sorensen. Do you have a friendly amendment? <laughs> um, council directs administration to bring back some information on what we should be asking for in asset management. Yes. Just you know, investigate asset management. Some, some more, more broad. So okay, I'll have to. Sorry. Can Sorry. I rescind my motion and try you again? You just withdraw the, withdraw withdraw the motion. The motion? Yep. I withdraw my motion and let's try this again. I make a motion that um, administration come back to council with uh, investigating how we can better prepare for uh, the life expectancy of our assets and uh, maintenance plan. Okay, that's better. Yeah, all right, perfect. Thank you. All right. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried down. Thank you. All right, Councillor McLean, you had a new item. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was one. I would like to bring up back um, bringing a path connecting the trail around the golf course to our trout pond trail because I see a ton, a ton of people riding on the highway. And in between those two spots, especially along, I don't remember what that highway is called. 
Thank you, 864. And so I was just wondering, like, I feel like we have space that we could just pop in a path because just for safety reasons, because I see it not only adults, but children as well, riding their bikes um, on along that highway. And a ton of, like, we have put in a ton of effort into the trout pond and also our golf course path and stuff. And I, like, it gets used. They both get used. But there, I think there just needs to be the connector. So I was just wondering if we could All right. look into that. Thank you. Yep, you bet. Councilor Firth. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through Councilor McLean. I believe the intent was that it connects through Westview. So there is, if you are heading on the trail that goes behind the Cooley Medical Clinic, there's a little, you can go into Westview. I don't think it completely connects yet, but then it connects to the trail on 56th Avenue, which then goes out on to the Trout Pond Road. So I think there is still a section that's missing, um, likely when, what street is that that connects? 43rd Street. Yeah. When 43rd Street connects to 56th Avenue, that should complete the loop. Sure, yeah. Um, I understand that, but I also don't think people go there. That's the problem. I, I appreciate that there is the intent for it to be completed, but I just see a ton of people hop on the highway and then go out that way. Like, it just seems like that's where all the traffic is going, and so I just feel like for safety and just because that's where everybody is, you know, I wish that it was completed, so then maybe people would use that way, but I don't know. If it was completed, maybe there would be a difference, but I don't know, right? And so, anyways, yeah. those are just my questions. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tibble. I just wanted to confirm that, yes, the, the future plans were to be through Westview, uh, but until the developer actually develops that space, the, the path remains unfinished. Um, I myself have used the highway, the shoulder, and it's not as desirable as, say, a path would be going through Westview and connecting to 56 as, as was intended. But absolutely, council can look in, or administration can look into anything that council would like us to. Um, I, I believe that the planning that took place to arrive at the original path configuration um, is probably the better answer than, than trying to go down the Alberta transportation road right away would be probably difficult, um, but we can investigate whatever council wishes. Yeah, I actually believe it was actually in the master plan to uh, go off 50th Ave directly north to 56th Ave in behind Council Bruins residence location down that stretch. If that sounds familiar, that's that's what I recall that that was earmarked to connect to 56th Avenue from 50th Ave for those six blocks right down that natural drain location slash alley, very doable. If that was, uh, you know, if we're wait, waiting on the other developer, I mean, we could be waiting for a long time for that to ever be completed. So I don't. Uh, don't know where that's going right now, but uh, but that that was talked about for sure. If it's not in the master plan, either, but I believe I believe it is in there as far as a connection location. Councilor Brook. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and just a little bit of a follow up on that trail. Um, I know we've discussed it in previous council. I think we even had diagrams at one time. It was going to go on the uh, west side of the, the 864, and then through um, now I guess DLC box property. There have been a number of options, but I believe in the end we did discuss going through Westview and up that way. But I think um, key to that is being the extension of 43rd Street. And my question would be through to Darren if we've had any further contact with the developer there about a temporary extension, being it gravel, or whatever, that we could put the street there because my vehicles on our carriage can't take that shortcut much longer like so many others. <laughs> um, I'd like to see if we could uh, follow up on that with the developer, if we could get something there, it'd be a somewhat temporary if need to be, because um, it saves a lot of miles on vehicles if you can go that way. Um, another thing I had to add, um, I just had an update from the motocross track, 
and they would like to extend an invitation to council on September 3rd at 7 p.m. to come out to the track and see the, the thing there. So if council could add that to their calendar, I think it'd be great if we could all show our support and show up for that. Me being one of them, because <laughs> I saw these things I missed, but I'd like to uh, try to get council out to that. And again, uh, priority though is on 43rd extension. All right, thank you, Councillor Schwarzen. Um, well, just to add the, to the conversation, um, I go on Westview around the lake. There's a little dirt path. You know, I go up there to whatever street that is, 56, mm -hmm. and then I just carry on. So, like, even if we can just fix the trail to make it more accessible for people to use, like, it's just a dirt trail, and it's I just, oh, it's not our property. Okay, I'm, I'm trespassing then. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that a lot of people go that route too, and it's a bit safer perhaps. So, yeah. right. I right. guess I shouldn't have added that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Councillor Sorensen. Just I had something else sure. to mention. Yeah. Oh, yeah, did you need? Uh, did I miss it? No. No, she was inquiring about this the path. Yeah. <laughs> Did you want to have I would like to be yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would I would like administration to look into the cost and also the feasibility of connecting the um, golf course path up to the fifty sixth Avenue road. All right, motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, now we thank you. Councilor Bruin. I, I suppose I would need to make a motion about 43rd extension. Yep. yep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a motion that council directs administration to investigate the possibility of extending 43rd Street, Street, right? Street, um, through the uh, development there being even somewhat temporary with a grader and some gravel just to make passageway through there a little easier. Um, to see if we can. 256 Avenue? 256 Avenue, yes. Right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. All right, let's get that covered. Okay, motion, motion on the table. Councilor Sharks, any questions? No, it's, again, I still have something. Another one, okay. Yeah. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, now just thank you. Well, Councilor Sharks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, just to, yeah, just to add to Councillor Firth's um, uh, planning uh, request for the review of the development permits, um, is there a special permit to expedite repairs of uh, essential kind of equipment like air conditioners, furnaces, so forth, um, emergency for um, existing businesses? Um, there was a business downtown that uh, their uh, air conditioner went out. It took 10 days or more to get the permit for them to have um, the accessibility of a crane to um, put this air conditioning unit on the roof. And I can just think of, you know, if it was a grocery store or, you know, maybe um, something different that this was really an essential item that, you know, 10 days is not a reasonable uh, request of time for a permit. So um, just forwarding that to administration. Um, I, I know which property that you're speaking about. Um, I, I don't know all the circumstances around it, but I, I know that it, it didn't all rest with just town administration. The back and forth that was happening between that particular um, business downtown. I can look into it further to see what those 10 days consisted of for sure, but uh, I do remember that coming through our planning department and I, was, I ended up getting involved in that particular transaction. All right, thank you, Councillor Schwarzen. Yeah, if I can just, again, like that's one certain instance, but just moving forward um, with the request with Councillor Firth, if we can just investigate also, you know, these certain one-offs and um, if we can, accommodate our businesses um, if there's a certain situation that comes comes or arises um, 
so I'm not sure if we could, if I have to make a, another um, motion or if that could just be added on to Council First request. I think you'll find that that question is answered with Council First's uh, survey request. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anything else? <laughs> All right. I have one item. I had an individual ask about the possibility of a uh, Canadian flag out at the trout pond. Um, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Really good idea. And actually, uh, I'm thinking maybe three flags might be appropriate out there. <clears throat> so, uh, anybody uh, got any other input on that possibility? Yeah, I've got one. All right, uh, Council Direction Administration to investigate flagpoles and flags, primarily the Canadian flag, provincial flag, and the Town of Tabor flag, to be displayed at the Tabor Trout Pond and report back to Council with cost estimates. Got that covered? All right, motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carrie okay, Namison, thank you. Is that the last item? Oh, somebody else? <laughs> okay, yes, so that we do have that. Uh, no delegates, so do we have any media inquiries whatsoever? There are none. All right, with that, can I have a motion to move into close, or sorry, move into our meal break and move into closed session? Councillor Beckman, motion on the table, all in favor? <laughs> Carried now, so thank you. Just, uh, <clears throat> All right, uh, item 10.1, Councillor Rumford. I'll make a motion that Council receives the Meadows Development Progress Report for information. Motion on the table. All in favor? Carried now, so thank you. Item 10.2, Councillor Sorensen. I'll make a motion that Council directs administration to move ahead with the booking of the main stage artist in collaboration with Spider Entertainment with the funding not to exceed 175000 to be added to the 2025 operating budget, supplemented by grant funding and sponsorships, and directs administration to start planning the remaining events with a report back at our future council meeting. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. All in favor? Carried now. Thank you. I don't know. Pardon me? Oh, you were, sir. Okay. The poll was one. It, but I was just going to do Okay. It. <laughs> All right. That's carried then. <clears throat> All right. Item 10.3 Proposed Thanks. Arena Concession Lease Renewal. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that Council authorizes the Ice Arena Concession Operator Lease for the property located at the Community Center Block C, Plan 7282JK. 4712 50th Street to Maggie's Place for a term to expire August 31st, 2029, and directs the Mayor and Chief Administrative Officer to sign the lease documents. All right, motion on the table. All in favor? Carried now. So thank you. Item 10.4, Councillor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that Council authorizes the lease agreement on the property located at Meridian 4, Range 16, Township 10, Section 18, which lies to the northwest of Township Road 102A, containing 4.8 acres, more or less, accepting there are out all mines and minerals, accepting there are out the oil, gas, well, lease lands, and directs the Mayor and Chief Administrative Officer to sign the lease agreement document. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. All in favor? Carried now. Thank you. Item 10.5, Councilor Firth. I move that Council authorizes the lease agreement of the property located at Meridian 4, Range 17, Township 10, Section 1, which lies to the east of the Trout Pond Recreation Area, containing 64.7 hectares, 160 acres, more or less, accepting there out all mines and minerals, accepting there out the oil gas well lease lands, and directs the Mayor and Chief Administrative Officer to sign the lease agreement document. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. All in favor? Here now, so thank you. Motion to close the meeting. Councillor McLean. All right. All in favor? Here it now. Yeah. 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 Did you yeah. see it's at 25 now? Yeah. Oh. Who oh. has it at 25? They're trying to sweat us out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's probably so pretty thick. Nobody's supposed to be here. Except for Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. Except for Kenya. Except for
Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Greg. You just hit the on button and then just watch. Are you going to record it? No. I got to keep turning.